I'm rolling the dice on this one. I'm recording this uh, Thursday night, okay? Thursday night. So, I don't know. Maybe the strike's over because there's encouraging talks that are happening between all parties involved. Hell, even the heads of some of the biggest studios came down in order to try to hammer out a deal. Pause. They were trying to figure out, okay, some of the major sticking points from what I'm hearing so far. Again, this could all be done and dusted, and this little preamble into the Disney stuff could be totally rendered moot. But the two big sticking points is obviously, well, the AI and the inclusion in order to make most of those laughable writers totally obsolete. And that comes from the studio side. It's mostly, mostly, you know, just kind of paid lip service to by the writer side of this thing going, yeah, we don't really want AI that's there, but we would kind of like it as a bit of an assist to some of our hack writing hell at this point in time you can't even really tell with the current output of hollywood the stuff that is still stri- or trickling out right now you don't even know if any human being has even laid eyes on that stuff that's the quality of output out there right now so yeah uh, they're kind of uh, hashing stuff out when it comes to ai and especially the actors as well the sag after side of this stuff they don't want to have you know their likeness used in perpetuity they don't want to just become simple skin suits that get thrust upon a screen in order to get used over and over and over again just kind of keeping hollywood in the death loop that it's in right now just sans creativity so yeah there there's some sticking points that are right there don't know how ultimately this is going to end but you know that's one thing and then also something else that i'm hearing which is like oh, okay cool this is why unions suck a massive throbbing veiny dick is because they want mandatory mandatory inclusion in writers rooms what does that ultimately work out that or war, that work out to well, we need a certain amount of people in every single writer's room that's out there. You know what that means? Uh, low IQ individuals that get hired on simple diversity boxes that they can check in order to get placed in there, in order to give the female perspective or the trans perspective or the black perspective but also taking a look into some of those writers rooms you know to provide the male perspective which is always just the beta cuck simp californian male perspective so who knows man who knows what's ultimately going to go on but at the end of the day this is probably the most that you thought about or cared about the strike because nobody gives a shit except for the people involved in this stuff which is probably why it's like oh fuck nobody's taking a side in this and they're just kind of really over the whole big hollywood idea so or hollywood idea so we might as well fucking hammer out a solution here. So what are they talking about? So yeah, WGA and AMPTP talks encouraging today. Uh, this was Thursday going into Friday. Oh, I'm sorry, Wednesday going into Thursday. And at the end of the day, Thursday, there was no concrete deal made. So like I said, rolling the dice. Hoping this goes into next week. More negotiations set for tomorrow. Yes, which were the ones that were held earlier recording day. But you know what? Hey, man, it is what it is. No deal yet. Reggie Guild and Studios and streamers are set to meet again Thursday for further talks and new contract scribes. The long-awaited CEO attended sessions today and that one insider described as very encouraging. The WGA and AMPTP will return a later Sherman Oaks offices on September 21st. We are told Net oh, Netflix's Ted Sandrados, Disney's Bob Eager, which we'll talk about a lot more very soon. Uh, Universal's uh, Donna Langley, Warner Brothers Discoveries, David Zasloff, and he's probably like, fire everybody, fire Fire them all, cut the heads off, because that dude loves axing pathetic projects. Just please make sure House of the Dragon Season 2 is good. In uh, the room, as Deadline reported earlier today, joining AMPT President Carol Lombardi and WGA Chief or Chief Negotiator Ellen Stutzman. Hmm. Notice a lot of th- a lot of commonality in these last names. Anyways, uh, the sit down saw incredible progress, as sources close to the event say. I'm sure there were. Uh, this is what happens when principles get serious another well-positioned source note of things start moving yeah that's so fantastic man but you know what there's a bigger there's a bigger overarching problem with hollywood and it's probably the reason why the strike has gone on so long while nobody's clamoring for anybody to return at this point in time it's because entertainment got too goddamn political if we're being completely honest that happened covertly decades ago generations ago you could argue i would say probably in the 80s at some point in time it all really started but then it just went overt right after trump okay that was i think that was everybody in hollywood's breaking point and then just certain steps along the line when people were starting to wake up to the obnoxiousness of hollywood but i think at this point in time everybody sees that the agenda is far more important than plot characters good films no 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 we we have an agenda 
We need to push it. And you're racist, bigot, sexist, homophobe if you don't purchase the tickets. Why is nobody showing up to our premieres? Why is everything bombing in the theaters? We, we were trying to guilt them into showing up, but that didn't end up working. So at least one of the big studios is going to take that to heart. No, they aren't. No, they aren't. Disney's going to be that lumbering elephant, okay? It is going to be that last woolly mammoth that's just going to go down and die with the cause. I don't believe this shit for one fucking second. Disney boss Bob Iger, oh, look it, there he is again, says the company will quiet the noise from the culture war controversies. Bro, you were the one that took this war hot on the entertainment front. He was the dumbass who was in charge and put all of this shit in motion during his first 10 years as CEO. Set up Bob Chapek in order to be the fall guy and then came back and realized, oh, fuck, I came back a little bit too early. And now I'm right in the thick of this shit. Oh, fuck, should have planned better. I thought you guys were better at, you know, scheming behind the scenes. It says the company, yes, will quiet the noise from the culture war as it remains in legal spat with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. And yeah, they lost a whole bunch of shit on their lawsuit right there. But don't worry, guys, we're going to spend a lot more on our theme parks that nobody are going to. Okay, weird. But you can't really focus that much more on your studio films because, well, they all suck dick. Uh, Warner, uh, well... Disney CEO Bob Iger revealed the company will quiet the noise around cultural issues uh, because it is shown to be bad for business as the company remains locked in a legal spat with Ron DeSantis. Iger's comments at an investor meeting are the latest up, uh, update in, in the ongoing saga between Disney and DeSantis after the company protested Florida's don't say gay bill last year last year and this was before Iger took over when it was just supposed to be good old dollars and cents Bob Chapek yeah he's a, he's a money guy he's not gonna go hot with this culture war shit but bro wherever Bob Iger oh Bob Iger's just kind of a lightning rod for all this shit if you were actually going to be serious about quieting the noise you'd have to gut the entire creative department over at Disney because they're the ones uh, they're the ones that are pushing this making sure that it's in fucking everything okay Disney's a not-so-secret agenda, the fact that they have a modus operandi of making, what, half of the characters that they're putting in all of these films gay, it was something like that. I, I don't think that I'm too far afoul of that, but somewhere on the spectrum, maybe not specifically, you know, tooting on Pecker or anything, but no, 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 maybe just non-binary. Pretty sure it was all the lead characters anyways. Fuck, take a look at everything that they put out there so far. Under this new initiative, Pixar's the latest flop, but trust me, bro, it's gonna break even. Fuck off. Uh, Elemental, you had your first Pixar animated non-binary character. They were so obsessed with breaking, uh, breaking all of these records. The first person to literally do ever or anything. Do you think that's going to stop? Because if it stops, okay, take take Bob Iger at his word, even though that's, you know, tr shown to be a pattern of futility because the guy just talks out of one side of his mouth and he or barks orders out of the other. Do you think that's going to resonate with the freaks that are in charge in the creative departments? No, no. They're as ideologically possessed as the cultists. And they try to say all the Trump supporters are. It's always projection with these freaks. Disney has threatened to pull back its $17 billion lawsuit in the Sunshine State unless DeSantis stopped his political attacks on the company. No, for as many complaints as I have for DeSantis and his ill-timed uh, presidential push, it's like that dude killed every single political prospect that he has in the future. But oopsie daisy, well, you did it to yourself. He has done some good things against Disney. I think ultimately, you know, it's going to be a net... This is kind of mutually assured destruction going after one of the biggest job creators in your state but if disney does a favor and just completely tanks a reputation in public which spoilers they're kind of doing right now then ultimately florida can take home the w so yeah ron was correct or whoever told him to keep the pressure on disney because well it's kind of working out for him a recent SEC filing shows that they spent $60 million over the next 10 years in its parks and cruise lines. It doesn't really seem like much. $6, six million a year in its parks and cruise lines? Okay. And Walt Disney World in Orlando is expected to be the forefront of the investment. Yeah, of course, because they still... Okay, that was another thing. Oh, Ron DeSantis really stuck it to that Reedy Creek, uh, Reedy, Reedy Creek Development District. He finally busted it up. Yeah, you take a look at the uh, terms that they have under the new district. It's basically the same thing. They just can't issue bonds. Okay, cool. Well, they still have preferential tax treatment, so whatever. Uh, the report to the Needham investment, and yeah, as opposed to, you know, uh, putting any more development in California with Disneyland. Yeah, no, it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. People are actually going to Florida to visit and to live as well. Everybody's just leaving California. They don't want to be around that cesspit. But Gavin Newsom's still going to try to run for president. Good on you, my 
Zero self-awareness, friend. Uh, a report to the Needham Institute uh, analyst, Laura Martin, on the investor meeting showed that Iger wants to make content that is entertaining, not issue-focused. Bruh, I'll believe it when I fucking see it. After the House of Mouse faced the backlash over pushing a woke agenda, which, yes, he was instrumental in implementing. So let's not go ahead and believe for a second he's just going to go ahead and walk any of that shit back. Come on. After Disney criticized the Don't Say Gay law, Governor shot back for first at the company and accuse them of being woke which they argue was a first amendment violation yeah if we want to be woke we definitely will and now they're saying oh no we're not going to be woke don't worry about it uh desantis targeted disney special tax district yes replaced its board of its allies and led to the change oh to the charge to change the name from reedy creek district to the central florida tourism oversight district yes yeah, see oh we changed the name ron desantis once again very good when it comes to branding before the desantis picked board took control disney created development uh, contract for future investments those were thrown out by the new board which led to a federal lawsuit earlier this month disney dropped a massive chunk of its federal lawsuit against the florida government governor because they couldn't afford it Iger's comments uh, are focusing on the entertainment rather than issues come after a recent spat of box office busts but here's the thing man for every little mermaid uh, Ga uh guardians of the galaxy 3 actually made money like it uh i think it it might have got up to 900 million dollars but it was the best performing film that they put out this year under the disney umbrella because it wasn't elemental <laughs> it wasn't ant-man <laughs> it wasn't indiana jones holy and it's definitely <laughs> it's it, it's not going to be the marvels that that might be the worst of the bunch okay but yeah little mermaid was also this year holy fuck that one that one came and went Mostly because, well, like, blackfacing or blackwashing Ariel, that was one thing, man, but nobody really from the cast or anything else came out and made the situation worse. They were just kind of knowing that, yeah, we're kind of a part of a sacrilegious movie, but we'll just release it, and I don't know, everybody will click their paycheck, and nobody will ever talk about it again. But yeah, okay, that, that one kind of came and went, and yeah, Strange, uh, Strange Worlds and Lightyear came out last year, but oof, Lightyear, oof, man, that that was probably a big ego check for Chris Evans, who has come out and said some funny things about uh, MCU stars just being uh, more characters than the actual actors, and it's like, well, if anybody would know, uh, Lightyear released one year ago, yes, with a reported budget of $200 million, and brought in $226 million. Wow, so it lost probably $200 million? No, uh, at least $150 million, okay. Uh, the film could not be shown in 14 Middle East and Asian countries because it depicted a same-sex relationship, my friend, because we don't fuck around with that. You'll love to see it. And, you know, nobody wanted to see, you know, a fucking three-hour-long Little Mermaid remake. Like, holy shit, bro, know your fucking audience. Like, the first one, it, what was it, 87 minutes long? Perfect. I'd love that film, unironically. Like, it's a really good fucking film. My appreciation for it over the years, given the fact that I used to be at least somewhat of a gamer, and every time that I seen a, you know... Atlantis level and Kingdom Hearts, I wanted to blow my brains out. But no, the original film, and then also, did it have a TV series? Because I, I think there was a TV series associated with that. I remember watching the Aladdin TV series, but Aladdin, ah, some of its messaging is pretty based, but they already had that live action remake and it had the cuck de jour uh, Will Smith desecrate the role that, you know, Robin Williams made legendary, but I digress for a second. The message has been baked into Disney's programming for years. I could argue it even presages anything in a cultural sense, like, their terrible relation, or yeah, their terrible relationship advice, even as soft as it was, and just you know, bringing up really horrible expectations for little girls growing up when it comes to finding their own prince charming, that goes back, no, like 1935. It's not 1937 anymore. Shout out Rachel Ziegler. God, I can't wait for that. Yeah, strike to be over for her to go back on the interview line. That's the only thing that I'm looking forward to when it comes to the strike eventually being over is everybody going back to promoting their shitty movies that are coming out, especially Brie Larson when it comes to the Marvels and Rachel Ziegler. Please, please do all of the interviews. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it so bad. Not because I want to see her. I just want to hear what she has to say. Just fucking just think of all the pent up aggression she has. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. But no, Disney, Disney's fucked because they have so many, so many things that are in the can right now that is festooned with the message. It permeates everything that they do. If they are going to change course, we aren't going to see it for years. Literally, we aren't going to see it until 2024. 
2025 and by that point in time is anybody gonna give a fuck what happens to disney yo man and just think about this think about this this is happening right now on the 100th anniversary of the Dis- walt disney corporation on the centennial Unfucking believable Only Bud Light and Target had bigger nosedives than Disney in 2023. And guess what? We still haven't found the bottom yet on this shit. And they're, they're gunning for that number one spot. Probably the first time they can say that throughout this entire year. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.